Nothing's worse, I think, as a man than being the guy that either A, is holding the group back, mm. right? Mm. Or B, telling the group that you're going to do something, and then when they ask about it, being the guy that didn't do it. Facts. There, there's something power because as men, you know, you know, there, there is this very strict judgment structure to where if you aren't performing or you're not like if you're bringing the team down, you got to go. Yeah. You can't play, bro. Right. Like, like you, you cost us the game winning shot. Yeah. You can't start anymore. Whew. And, and I think it's that strict accountability that like it forces you either to grow or to go. Bro, you got to do one or the other. Yo, what's good, everybody? This is Hafiz, and welcome back to another episode. Before we begin today's episode, I would like to shout out our amazing sponsors over at Shortform. Guys, Shortform is book summaries on steroids remember we're constantly talking about this readers are leaders and if you are a man trying to take your life to the next level you got to be reading books but i understand that a lot of you guys are busy and there's so many books you're interested in that you may not have the time to access right now so the best part about short form is that they give you these book summaries of all of your favorite books Books like The 48 Laws of Power, books like 12 Rules for Life, books like Think and Grow Rich, all the books we recommend. Go to shortform.com slash roommates and get your 20% off your already discounted offer from Shortform. Fellas, do not miss this opportunity. Tap into Shortform, link in the description below, and you will thank me later. As you guys know, we have been doing our standard series and we've been traveling all across the country talking to some of my favorite people who have tapped into the standard and many of you guys know the standard is my, me and joseph's luxury suit company that creates communities of extraordinary men and if we're going to cap off the standard series we have to bring in everybody's high school's best dress individual who wins the award no matter where he goes and my business partner and the creative genius behind the standard. So without further ado, guys, please welcome back to the show, your favorite, the one and only Joseph Hines. Hafiz, my man, appreciate the, the, the introduction. <laughs> As always, you might be one of the best in America at, uh, listen, at teeing listen. up the introduction. Listen, man, listen, man. So. <laughs> I, I try my best, man. I try my best. Appreciate you, brother. Listen, man, yeah. I love the spot. I love the views. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like this is the energy <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that yeah. we need to tap into yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to really embody and to express all that we've been doing with the standard. No, no, absolutely, man. I mean, I, I think it's huge. And, and I, I really think what, what did it for me was that Dallas Weekend experience. Mm. I think that's when uh, just seeing the impact yeah. that it had for the guys, being able to expose them to certain things that otherwise they may have never been exposed to, mm. and seeing the level of excitement, seeing the, the passion that it created in them, the hunger that it created in them, um, it really did something for me as well. Right. Because I think it's, it's cool to have personal success. Right. But when you can start creating that hunger for success in other individuals, that's what really kind of kind of turns the battery up for me, because it gives you an extra level of energy to continue to perform um, and continue to, again, create value for others. So they want to then in, uh, in turn create value for themselves. Now, I love that. And for those who have not seen or do not know about the Dallas Weekend, I'm gonna show you a quick 45 second peek into the beauty of that Dallas Weekend experience. Thank us later. <laughs> you know, I love that you say that because 
I think about what you and I created with that standard experience, that Dallas weekend, yeah. is every single thing I wish I would have had when I was in my early 20s or at the beginning of my, my process, even at the middle, heck, even at the end of the process. Mm -hmm. Because what I've learned the most is that seeing is believing. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, we should have faith in what we can't, can't see, but for a lot of people, they need to see in order to believe. And so for a lot of those men to be able to go and see what it actually looks like mm -hmm. if you put in the work. Because I think for so many different individuals, they have no idea what it actually would feel like mm -hmm. if they were able to be the man that they believe that God created them to be. Yeah. So yeah. imagine if you told all the men for a day, Mm -hmm. I'm going to take you 10 years, five years, seven years, yeah. three years into the future yeah. so you can experience what life is going to be when you put in the work, when you've actually tapped into your full potential. And imagine going into the future, experiencing all your new powers, you yeah, know, yeah, and yeah. then going back in time. Like the, imagine that motivation, that mm -hmm. inspiration, mm -hmm. that the, the enlightenment you would have had because now you've seen with your own eyes what can always be true in the future. Yeah, man, and, and I think what's so true about that too, even if you're looking at science and nature, right? There's this theory that you know in nature, every atom or, or unit is modified by its nearest associate, mm. right? So hydrogen plus oxygen equals H2O. Yeah. So it becomes this idea of what are your associates making you into? Are they making you into a solid or making you into a liquid? Mm. And and for the situation like that, being around that energy, right, being around that experience, I think there's a modification process that happens to those guys when they come in contact with that. And when they leave, it still lingers with them. Right. And that's what, I, again, I think is so important is when you can expose people to things. Right. Exposure promotes growth. And I think that exposure process is really what, what, what transforms guys. Because again, I, I don't think it, there's too many situations to where on a normal basis, you will be exposed to those type of situations that we expose those guys to. I mean, two story penthouses, the whole weekend experience, I mean, in itself, even going after, right? Seven Uber blacks pulling up to the club, mm -hmm. VIP. Like there, there's certain things where I think that exposure process is just a little bit different. Mm. Um, and again, it, it, it can change people in a positive way, Yeah. right? You you know, that's why they even say, right, you become like the, the three or four people that you hang around. Yeah. And, you know, you, you hang around, you know, boss long enough, you hang around successful people long enough that, you know, you hang around certain situations long enough, your taste level starts mm. to change a little bit. And then once your appetite changes, you know, you, you can't go, you can't, <laughs> you can't go back to McDonald's, yeah, right? Yeah, like yeah, like yeah. You, you only want five star dining. Mm. Um, and again, I, I think that's what's so cool to see is guys' palates mm. starting to change the taste level starting to change a little bit. Yeah, no, that's great. So what I want to do in today's conversation mm -hmm. is I want to touch on the three themes of the standard. Yeah. And right. then I want to get into specifically how, whether a man is in the standard or not mm -hmm. in the standard, that can be able to transform his life. Because what I've realized is all that I've been learning for the past 10 years, all these interviews, all the people I've mm -hmm. talked to really brought me to these three themes. Yeah. And I believe these three themes once you're able to tap into these three themes, you're radically able to transform your life. And the first theme of the standard is mm -hmm. dressing like a 1% man. Yeah, yeah. Um, you talk about it all the time and you have an amazing perception economics course that a lot of the guys are tapping into. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I tell people the story all the time. In 2013, I wanted to write my first book. I was meeting with agents and editors and talking to a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. And what they told me was in order to sell a book successfully, you need to have two things. Mm -hmm. You need to have an amazing cover yeah. and amazing content. Mm -hmm. You see, the reality of life is, unfortunately, people judge books by their cover. Yeah. And yeah. so a lot of people's first impression of a book is the cover, as mm -hmm. well as that first page, the, the little summary on the back or the summary yeah. on, the, on, the, on yeah. the first flap. So if you're going to be a great book, you have to capture the audience's attention immediately, but then also, after you capture the audience's attention immediately, you need to then continue to capture their attention yeah. with the content. And what I've noticed is, and you talk about this all the time, so many guys mm -hmm. do not realize how they're being overlooked because the cover of the book is trash. Yeah, yeah. And so the first reason why we decided to do a suit company is because we truly have experienced it 
And we truly know that dressing like a 1% man, dressing mm -hmm. like a top tier man, dressing like a man of excellence, now causes people to treat you yeah. the way you're dressing. And so that is the first theme, but I want you to expound upon it a little bit more because I think you, you have a great understanding of that whole yeah, dynamic. Yeah, so, I mean, th there's a lot of ways to look at it. I think the first thing I have empathy is a lot of guys look at dressing well as such a pseudoscience, mm. right? Because if you tell people, oh, you know, yeah, you dress well and great things start, it, it seems like such a such a gimmick mm. to a certain degree. So yeah. for a lot of guys, that's kind of the first hurdle to get over is because it it doesn't seem very actionable or logical at first. Why? Um, well, I, I think for a couple reasons. Number one, guys tend to never prioritize perception. They prioritize performance. Mm. And the issue that I think happens is guys aren't able to separate the two. So for instance, they might see a Steve Jobs or they might see a Jeff Bezos or a guy who's making, let's say, millions, billions of dollars who doesn't dress well. And they say, ah, look at that guy. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to dress well. And, and what I always try to separate the issue is, look, you're right. There's a lot of guys, right? Going back to basketball reference, there's a lot of guys who are dropping 30 points a night, right? But here's the issue. And this is what a lot of people don't realize. They're dropping 30 points a night, but they're having to shoot 35, 40 shots to do it. Mm. Not realizing that if they dress well and add the perception piece, they'd only have to do 15. Mm. So what happens now when you're dropping 30, but you're a way more efficient player from the field, yeah. right? What happens when you go from being Russell Westbrook to a Kevin Durant? <laughs> no, really. Yeah. And that's the thing where a lot of guys aren't able to understand because they get so caught up on the performance piece. And again, man, look, I'm dropping buckets. I'm making 100,000 a month. Not understanding that they're leaving so much on the table. Like, look, I love playing 2K, right? Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I'm trying to get all of my game sliders yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I don't want my guy just to be a three-point specialist because, to, to be honest, the specialists aren't the guys that win MVP. Yeah. Right? The specialists aren't. It, it's the guys who are able to become great all around players in the game. Yeah. Those are the guys who end up becoming MVPs, right? Like your 3 and D guys as valuable as they are to the team. They're very right? replaceable. Yeah, the, like J.J. Reddick's not winning MVP, but he's a great addition to the team. Kyle Korver back in Kyle, the day. Like, you, you know yeah. what I mean? Pa you know, e even um, Patrick Beverly. Yeah. Great guy, he's not winning MVP. Yeah. It, it, but it doesn't mean he's not effective, and, and, and that's what I think a lot of guys have that block because they can take it personally, meaning that they're not effective. And it doesn't mean that they're not effective, but what it does mean is there's this whole addition to their game that they're missing. Per perfect case in point, I love watching the show Bridgerton, right? And the reason I love Bridgerton and even that time period specifically is because during that time, it wasn't enough just for you to be a Duke, yeah. right? Like the title wasn't enough. No, you had to know how to dress well. You, know how to, you had to know how to speak well. You, know how, you had to know how to dance. Right. You had to know how to do horseback riding. Mm -hmm. Like there were all these things that you had to know how to do to be a complete man. It just wasn't one thing. Yeah. And that's what I think guys get so hung up on is they're so lopsided in one area. It's like it's like the guy at the gym. All he does is upper body doesn't do legs. Yeah. No, man, you, you got to work out the complete body. And that's uh, where I think that the difficulty lies is guys just focus, again, so much on the performance piece that they forget completely about the perception piece. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and that's the thing where, you know, when you start grooming guys, especially guys that might already be performing at a, at a high level where it's a little bit harder for them to see because there's certain things that they have access to that make them kind of blind to that piece that they're missing. But once they do, I mean, I have so many clients, man, that's shooting me text messages like, man, I, honestly, I didn't believe how impactful it was. But people can't stop giving me comments. People can't stop saying, I, man, Joe, thank you. Yeah. Right. Tons and tons of text messages. You know, I have this little series on my Instagram where it's like text messages I like to receive. Mm -hmm. And it's just random text messages I get from client like nine, ten, ten at night. Like, bro, like blown away. Thank yeah. you. Wifey couldn't get off. me. <laughs> you, you know what yeah. I mean? And yeah. that's the thing where I, I think um, when guys really start diving into that, it becomes huge. And then there's the statistic side of it, too. Right, like the brain processes images 60,000 times faster than it does words. So let's think about that. That's why memes are so popular, right? That's why emojis are so popular because it's something about imagery that the brain processes way faster than it does words. Even when you think about communication, 
right? When you think about like the Mayans, the Egyptians, what did they communicate with on the walls? Pictures, yeah, not words. No, no that's so good. That's such a good point. And I think, I think to me, the part of the conversation about the dressing piece is mm-hmm. that it's such a practical thing yeah. to test out. And we've always been telling the guys, yo, if mm-hmm. you do not believe us about the suits, yeah. try a suit Saturday. Don't even get a standard piece. Yeah. They'll get you something from H&M, Zara, return it the next day. I've done mm-hmm. it before when I didn't have money. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and, and experience your life wearing your regular clothes, then put on a suit and experience your life there. I think the closest thing a man can get to being a woman is putting on a suit. And I say that not in the politically incorrect way, (laughs) but I say that because the thing about women is that so much of their value Mm -hmm. is on the exterior. Not saying that their value is not inside, obviously, but it screams on their exterior. So you become enamored by them because they're just walking value symbols. And so as a man, some guys will try to emulate that with the Lamborghinis, mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. the Dolce mm-hmm. & Gabbana, with the Louis Vuitton, yeah. Yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. They'll, they'll mm-hmm. try to emulate that. But to me, that usually communicates a level of, I don't want to say beginner's money, but it mm-hmm. communicates a level of insecurity when, yeah. you're, when your branding is so loud. Yeah, yeah, no, so, and, and we've kind of had this conversation, it's this difference between luxury and designer, mm-hmm. right? Where designer is meant to be seen, where luxury is meant to be understood by those who understand. Yeah. And, you know, we've had this conversation, but what I see a lot of guys doing is they invest so heavily in signaling items, mm-hmm. meaning the chain, heavily branded items, right? Not realizing that people who really operate in that space they tend to not wear very heavily printed items. They're Mm -hmm. actually very subtle. So it becomes a if you know, you know thing. Not only that, but what I've seen is when you do invest in those signaling items, the type of people that you begin to attract in your life are mercenaries, not soldiers. And what I mean by that, mercenaries what, right? They work for the highest bidder. And there's always going to be somebody who can make a bigger payment than you. So I don't want to attract mercenaries in my life. What I want to attract are soldiers, people who are loyal, Mm-hmm. Right? People are going to stand and fight for the country. Not people mm-hmm. are going to be like, okay, look, honestly, the payment's not high enough. I'm out. Yeah. And, and when I think guys start realizing that, it's just a different type of attraction that begins happening when you're able to move from kind of that, that designer level items to more of a luxury space. Yeah. Um, I mean, and it's a huge difference. 100%. And so I think to me, when you're a guy and you wear the suits, you you then begin to communicate that value because what you realize, especially a quality suit and yeah. a well-fitted suit. Joe talks about it all the time, not the Tracy McGrady draft uh, suit, yeah, you know, yeah, not the yeah. old school Steve Harvey suits, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? The new school Steve mm-hmm. Harvey suits. Yeah. You know what Shout I mean? out to Ellie too, man. Yeah. Shout out to Ellie. You know, and so it's important. And I just, and, and my biggest thing is that I I want guys to realize bro, this really works. Mm-hmm. And the reason I'm so excited about this product, because I was talking to Alex, Alex Costa about this, and he was saying that it's hard for him to sell because he himself doesn't want to doesn't want to appear like I'm just this salesman trying to push a product on you, or like the snake oil salesman. And I explained to him, I said, a snake oil salesman is somebody who sells snake oil. Mm-hmm. Something that communicates promises one thing, but actually does something completely opposite. It's, yeah. it's Fugazi. Fugazi's Fugazi's mm-hmm. not real, right? Yeah. But when you're actually selling the elixir of life, you can promote it as loud as a snake oil guy because you're actually promoting real value. Yeah. And so to me, the thing that I can honestly say the missing piece with you and Stefan D who came into my life, and that was the missing piece that took my life to the next level was the style component. And by being able to tap into that, mm-hmm. it really opened so many doors like never before. Even with, in regards to the penthouse that the guy saw during the Dallas experience, yeah, yeah. I pulled up in the standard suit, met with the manager, she connected with the owner the next day because of how I was dressed. And so it's just something where I wish more men, if you don't believe us, just try it out yourself. Yeah. And I have yeah. not met an individual who communicates that it does not work. Right. 
Right. No, no. I mean, I mean, that's real. And, and again, if, if it's not working, then you probably need to take the perception economics course. Yes. <laughs> you know? um, but, but really, man, it, it's one of those things to where when you do it right, it's just it changes your perspective on so many things as a man. Um, and, and the response like and that's that's the thing. Like some say some days, I honestly wish I had a camera just following me. Bro, right? I, because there's so many situations to where I'm just like, guys, really don't have it. Here's yeah. a reality, Joe. I thought about this. Mm-hmm. How many men have never been stopped a day in their life and someone, especially a woman, says, You look amazing today? Yeah. I I remember we did a vlog last year. <laughs> you know what I'm talking <laughs> yeah, about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did a vlog last year. Yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah. literally, it was about like the power of suits. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, um, the guy who was working for us at that time was a yeah. rookie to the game. Yeah, yeah. So he wasn't quick on his feet. <laughs> Literally, well, while we were walking yeah, through the mall, yeah. we got stopped so many times. Yeah, we wish yeah. we could have captured on the camera yeah, so yeah. the men can see. And I'm like, guys, so yeah. many men have never mm-hmm. heard yeah. and even experienced that. Mm-hmm. Women go through it all the time. Yeah. They go out. What happens? People, oh, my gosh, you look so amazing. So yeah. amazing. But when you're a guy mm-hmm. in a well-fitted suit, a luxury yeah. suit, bro, you get stopped by Everybody, even that little puppy that came in, the yeah. dude who, who, was, who had that puppy literally was like, love this yeah, 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 I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I just, I don't know what more to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. It, and, and it is a thing, again, that I wish guys could experience because all it takes is that one interaction, that one experience, and then guys get it. Yeah. Right. And then they're like, oh, this is what they've been talking about. Right. It, it's not a pseudoscience. Right? Yeah. This is actually like a real thing. And, and I think what you touch on is very big. You know, women are so much more in tune with this idea of perception. Right. And being cognizant about how they present themselves, being accountable with how they present themselves. So women, I think, I mean, they they understand exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, uh, what we're talking about. But men, again, I just think there's there's this overcompensation on the performance piece because there is a level of access it gives you. Mm-hmm. But again, they don't realize how much more efficient yeah. they could be from the field if they have both. And so the second part of the standard, if the first part is dressing like a top tier mm-hmm. man, the second part, which is the most important part, is becoming a top tier man. Yeah. And there's multiple avenues, mm-hmm. um, aspects that I want to dive into when we're talking about this, because yeah. I think people miscommunicate, misunderstand a lot of the ideas. The first thing, shout out to the GOAT King AMS. When I met AMS a couple of years ago, we sat and we had a conversation and I told AMS, I said, I noticed a shift in your content. And the shift in your content was from men faking that they are high value mm-hmm. to men actually becoming high value. Yeah. He was like, you watch my stuff. <laughs> and I love what he did because so much of old school pickup, mm-hmm. so much of old school dating advice is all about men acting like the top tier guys. It's emulating their behavior. Yeah. It's the mimicry mm-hmm. of these top tier individuals. But the next level is that instead of mimicking you actually become. Mm. Because the problem with a lot of guys yeah. is they work on all these tricks, techniques, moves to mimic top tier behavior. And you might be able to get yourself in the in the door, you might be able to get yourself in a bedroom, but you never get to stay in, in both of those rooms. Yeah. And I think it's so important that guys realize that there is a path that we have walked. Mm-hmm. That many men have walked, yeah. and what we've deci- what we've done with with the standard yeah. was we were able to literally like Batman and Superman recruit all the Justice League's members <laughs> ah, yeah. from around the world yeah. and bring them together. Mm-hmm. To now, what the standard has become is that is a community of all these experts. We yeah. have the Aquamans, we have the Adams. Yeah. You know what I mean? We have all these different people mm-hmm. who have these different gifts. You know, you will have a guy like uh, Alex, who's a master of real estate. You might have a guy like Ryan, who's a master of an investment portfolio. You might have a guy like Ty, who's a master of fitness. A guy like Zach Richardson, who's a master of spirituality. Then you have the Jose Zunigas. You have the mm-hmm. um, the um, um, Alex Costas. You have the Stefan Labosiers. You have the freaking Jordan Peterson. Yeah. Shout out to yeah, Dr. Shout out to Peterson Peter, yeah. for tapping into the standard as well. So now you have all these guys 
in one place so that now you don't have to copy them. You can actually learn from them and build up your skills to become like that. And, and the last thing I thought about was this idea of, I talked about in my video about the avatar because the avatar is the master of all four elements, water, earth, air, and fire. And so what you see in the, in the TV show Avatar is Aang knows one element at the beginning of season one. All he knows is air. Mm -hmm. So he goes on a journey to learn water, then earth, then last fire. And he becomes the Avatar when he's a complete package. So many men are one trick ponies. Right. A majority of guys are all finance guys. Yeah. All they do is build that financial mm -hmm. avatar. All they do is make a lot of money. All they do is have a job and they leave with that. Then some guys are the, 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 the physical guys. They have the great clothes. They have the great face. They have the great body. That's all they have. Yeah. Then you have the spiritual guys. You know, they're the ones that tapped into the masculinity. They're the ones that are biblically literate. They're the ones that have a good relationship with God. Then you have the emotional guys, great in communication, mm -hmm. great in regards to emotional control, great in regards to work in a room and understanding how to converse. But usually men just double down on their talents mm. and they become one-sided individuals. Yeah, yeah. And what we're doing is that we're giving men all the tools mm -hmm. to become all four things. Mm -hmm. And when you become all four things, you really become this ultimate man. Yeah. Because what I've noticed in today's world is that even some of the top tier of men usually are two at most. Mm. And the best are three. Mm -hmm. But when you've mastered all four, physical, emotional, spiritual, and financial. Oh, yeah. <laughs> bro, it's, 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 it's yeah, scary yeah, because yeah. You, you, you enter into places yeah. and spaces where, this is going to sound super arrogant, you're not a human being anymore. Yeah, you're, you're Neo in the Matrix. <laughs> you're, seriously. You're, you're seeing numbers, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> you're not a human yeah. being. Like, you're, you're not operating on the mm -hmm. level of other individuals. You're just not. They're just, they, 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 they cannot compete mm -hmm. with you. And, and so to me, the biggest thing that I realize is the game changer mm -hmm. in really becoming a top tier man is other men. Mm -hmm. Because so many guys read books in isolation, yeah. so many guys watch videos in isolation, but they don't have other men working together with them who are equally as committed to excellence. Mm -hmm. And that's something that Man, I, words cannot describe how excited I am that mm -hmm. we built that, man. Man, so I, I want to touch on two things. Go ahead. Right. Um, the first thing is, is this idea of community and yeah. plugging in. And to your point, as guys, I think we become too dependent on our own abilities. Mm. Right. And, and just to give you an example. Right. And you, you've, we've had this conversation before, but like, you know, I'm an iPhone guy. <laughs> right. And without fail. Every time I'm on my iPhone, the same thing happens every day, right? Wake up, use my phone, about two or three hours in, 70%, yeah. right? Another four hours goes by, you know, 40%, right? Another eight hours goes by and bleep, 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 10% low power mode, right? And then by the time it's on 10% low power mode, you know, I'm scrambling for the charger, trying to find something to plug into, but what do you think ends up happening? My phone dies. And for a lot of guys, right, we're like the iPhone, we, we think we're so great, yeah. right? And by the time it's time for us to plug in, right, when we're on low power mode, it's too late. We can't find the charger, mm. right? And we end up dying, right? Just feeling drained. And I think this is a chance, especially with the standard, for guys to have something that they can consistently plug into so they don't have to go through that process of, dang, I'm on low power mode. Mm. Golly, I'm on 10%. You know, I'm down. Now I'm trying to find the charger when I'm tired and it's too late. Now I got to turn the, you know, the phone brightness yeah, all the way down because yeah, 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 yeah. it's too late. Yeah. Uh, and that's what I, I really think the standard, especially even with, with our masterclass Mondays, right? Ooh, man, tell the people about that which, one, which, which I think is huge. So we have these masterclass Mondays now to where we're allowing guys to operate in their own genius. So, you know, your guys like your Alex, your Ryan, they're teaching within their sphere of excellence. And yeah. now what it also does is we're inspiring guys to, you know, by the time they end their stay with the standard, they need to be able to teach a masterclass Monday. Mm -hmm. They need to be able to level themselves up to a space to where they now have their own area of genius that they can operate in to give value yeah. right within the group, which I think is huge. And then the second thing um, is this idea of becoming right. And, you know, I heard Tony Robbins say this and he says, as humans, we have a need to perform consistently with the way that we view ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so huge. And go back to another story. Right. UGA. Mm -hmm. First time. 
19. And it, whoever's familiar with UJ, you know this, it's a college town. And what's so cool about it is, man, when you go there, there's nothing but bars, right? Really, 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 really cool place. And I remember me and my friends were going out and literally this is my first time going out in UGA. And, you know, I didn't have an ID, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm 21 under. So I'm like, dang, I'm about to get in. So my friend says, man, you know what? I got you. So he hands me this fake. So at this point, I'm super nervous because I'm looking down the ID. The guy's dark skin. I'm light skin. I'm like, oh, God, this yeah, is yeah. not going to end well. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. you know, I get up to the bouncer. The bouncer looks at the ID, looks at me, looks back at the ID. He says, you got to you go in. So I'm like, oh, my God. Yes, let me in. <laughs> but what was so interesting is even as I got into the bar, the whole time I still was uncomfortable. Right. Like literally, I went to the corner. I didn't want to dance. I didn't want to make too much noise. Right. I literally did not want anyone to see me. And the reason that was is because even though I had access to the space, my identity didn't allow for me to take it yeah. for granted, yeah. right? And really, you know, pull it by the horns and have fun in the space that I had access to. And for a lot of guys, I think in that becoming process, right, they don't upgrade their ID, right? They don't work on upgrading their identity. And in the standard, it's a chance for them to do that, right? Instead of them just talking about, you know, you know, being this guy, it gives them a chance for them to actually work on it. So that way, when they, you know, get in these 21 and up places, they can take advantage. A hundred percent. So when we met with Dr. Peterson um, last week, he was he he was very intrigued by what we were doing, really yeah. impressed. And, and he asked a question about, um, you know, preparing the men mm -hmm. and what are we doing to prepare them? Yeah. And he and I told them about how I was very inspired by his future authoring program. Mm -hmm. And his future authoring program was basically um, a, a written documentation of your future. Because as men, you need to have a clear direction yeah. for the way your future want, is gonna be. And, and so I think that's so powerful because that's something that I'm actually launch, we're, we're actually launching is, is our version of that. And, I, and it's basically my identity course I created mm -hmm. years ago where men can really understand who they are and begin to shape their identity. Because to me, I think that so many guys today who are working and becoming, like you said, they still have imposter syndrome mm -hmm. because they truly don't feel like they belong in the room. And to be able to get to that point where you not only feel like you belong in the room, but you command the room. Yeah. It has to start with within. Mm -hmm. And the part that I think when when it when this really blows up mm -hmm. and people see Joe on the, you know, the fourth, third, and the thirty list <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in the next few years, the part that so many people are gonna try to emulate what we're doing that they will never be able to do is the character component. Mm -hmm. Because for everybody online, when it comes to becoming the best version of yourself, yeah. leveling up, improving, male improve, whatever it is, money and muscles, mm -hmm. money and muscles, yeah. and maybe mindset. <laughs> yeah. But nobody yeah. is really building the character component. So I'm going to tell a, a brief story in, Joe, in true Joe fashion, <laughs> a brief story yeah. that I told in my last week breakout session. Mm -hmm. In the Bible, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, I believe, there's a chapter, and the title of the chapter, depending on which verse you're reading, is called the Hall of Faith. Mm -hmm. So based on the chapter, it talks about all these amazing men of faith in the Bible. They name people like Abraham and, 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 and David and, 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 and Joshua and all these amazing men of faith. There's two guys that stood out to me in, that, in, in the description of all these amazing men of faith, David and Joseph. Two guys. I took the guys to the story of David and Joseph, and it, and it was blowing my mind as I was taking them through the story. Mm -hmm. What's interesting enough, David and Joseph were both the youngest sons of really successful fathers. Mm. You know, David and Joseph both were shepherds when they were very young. Mm. David and Joseph both had a calling of greatness in their life. And, a, and when you see David's story at the beginning, you see that David, as a young man, was working in the fields and then Samuel anointed him as king to be. And then it said the spirit of God went over David. And then David was 
working in Saul, the king at the time's palace, as the guy was just playing the harp. Very humble guy. Mm -hmm. Joseph was his father's favorite. Joseph would tell stories like, one day all you guys are going to bow down to me. Very arrogant, very proud. Yeah, you got to be wild. You know what I mean? Tell your owner, brother, just, like, tell you, just, so you know you guys are actually going to... All, you're going gonna, gonna to bow down to me. See, so if these yeah, two guys, yeah, yeah. young guys, very attractive guys, youngest, youngest sons, mm -hmm. David, very humble, Joseph, very arrogant. Yeah. David, we all know the story of David and Goliath, same guy. Mm -hmm. David and Goliath, he sees this Goliath guy talking trash about God and God's army, goes out, fights him, kills him. And then what's interesting is that uh, because Joseph talks so much trash, his brothers want to kill him. And then his brothers end up selling him to slavery to the Israelites, which then go to Egypt. Fast forward both of their lives, both of them go through hardship. David is running from Saul because Saul wants to kill him. Then jo Joseph is in e Egypt, yeah. you know what I mean, yeah. kind of as a slave in boy, prison. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. working, works his way up. At one point, jo Joseph is the overseer of Potiphar's house. David is the king of Israel. So you have these two young boys finally become these men. Interesting things happen to both of them. Both of them are tempted by beautiful women. Mm. One day, Joseph sees Potiphar's, so Potiphar's wife, who was the guy who he was working for, who was the captain of Pharaoh's guard, says, sleep with me. She wants him. She desires him. David, while everyone else is at war, is chilling in the castle. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, David sees Bathsheba bathing. In, jo in Joseph's story, you find out that Joseph says, I will never do that. That's wrong. She keeps on persisting, persisting, persisting. Then all of a sudden, one day she, she, she corners him like, yo, you, you, you finna <laughs> give it up today. <laughs> and she grabs his clothes and he runs out the house butt naked. But then in David's story, he sees Bathsheba naked. And he, he asks, who is that woman? It's, oh, that's so-and-so's wife. Oh, bring her to me. Smashes her, gets her pregnant, then tries to get her husband. Goes out to war. It's you know, sad, you, you know what I mean? <laughs> tries to get her husband to, to go back home. But he's such a man of honor. I can't go back home to my wife. My, my homies are in war. Then, then David makes him go to the front lines and gets him killed. Then marries his wife. And it says that God's not pleased with him. And I thought that story was so powerful because one man, life happened and he rose up the ladder and he was humiliated. That was David. Another man rose up the ladder and he was humbled by God. And that was Joseph. And so it's so important that guys got to realize that we're going to give you all the tools to become the best version of yourself. And a lot of men get all the tools to become the best version of themselves. And a lot of men become successful, top tier, 1%, high, whatever the hell you want to call it nowadays. But at the end of life, most men get humiliated because they never build the character. And some men get humbled and lifted up before God. And so to me, that... It's so powerful because in today's world, there's nobody trying to build men's character. And there's so many men who are watching other content and they're going to make a lot of money. They're going to get a lot of muscles. They're going to have the masculine mindset and all that stuff. But they're going to be humiliated because they're going to be in situations and in rooms where their, comp their character is going to get compromised and they're going to sabotage themselves and their future. And so to me, I just think building those whole men and all the guys in that same accord, bro, you just, I just, I, I don't think anyone can be able to emulate it because mm -hmm. there's not many men who value character in today's world. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it takes more work. Yeah. Right. Like, like it, it's, it's not, um, it's not the sexiest thing to talk about mm -hmm. and it's also not the easiest thing to build, mm -hmm. um, and curate. Yeah. Right. It's, it's not always what's going to get the most clicks. It's not always going to get the most views. It's, yeah. it's not as salacious. It's a longer process. Uh, some can even say it's more grueling. Yeah. Uh, however, right. Those are the things uh, that, that I think if you take the time to build, right, if you build the house with, with stone, mm -hmm. right, brick. Yeah. You know, it tends to last a little bit longer. Yeah. You know, although it takes a little bit longer to build, yeah. it will last 
a, a lot longer. So no, I 100% agree with you, man. Yeah. And then the last part of the standard is to experience the life of a 1% man. So at the beginning, we talked about it. What we've added to the standard is called a standard experience. At the end of every quarter, after mm-hmm. the guys put in a ton of work, we have a celebratory experience yeah. for the men. I'm um, a select few men who get to come and experience the life of a 1% man. The mm-hmm. Dallas weekend was absolutely exceptional. Yeah, it was insane. It was crazy. Yeah. Bro, I remember you told me, you were like, <laughs> I've never, what did you say to me? You said something to the extent of like, I've experienced many moments in my life where I, where I felt what it was like to be a rapper, yeah. but this was the closest by far. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, you no, know? no, 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 for, for sure, for, for, for sure. <laughs> and, and so the guys were able to experience it, and we're giving the men of the standard opportunity to, like we said, experience the life that they can, they can, they can live yeah. when they put yeah. in the work. But here was an interesting thing that happened that you and I talked about. Though we put a lot of the guys in the game mm-hmm. in the fourth quarter of the yeah. championship, a lot of them, um, not a lot of them, some of them mm-hmm. froze up. Yeah. Because deep down inside, they weren't meant to be on the field. Mm-hmm. And so what I realized is there's so many men who want a certain life mm-hmm. where deep down inside, if they were to get that life today, they would freeze. Yeah. They wouldn't be ready to handle it. Yeah. There's so many men, and they, we talk about it all the time, who they want these top tier women. Mm-hmm. Fit, feminine, friendly, fine, flexible, all the F yeah. words. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then you put that woman in front of him, he freezes. Mm-hmm. So what we realized was that with the experience that we were giving them, a yeah. lot of men got a reality shock, a reality check. And a reality check exposed them to just how far they were from where they wanted to be. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, I, I think that's a good a, a good point. And for a lot of guys, I don't think enough guys put themselves in positions to get the reps in. Mm. Right. So it's one of those situations to where like you can read about karate all day long, mm-hmm. but until you get punched in the face, yeah. right? Until, until you get kicked, right? You don't really know how to fight. Mm. And it in at the end of the day, it's one of those things to where it's theory versus practice. Yeah. You can theorize about it all day long, but at some point you have to get the reps in. Yeah. You have to go out on the field and play. And I think it's one of those things to where it, you know, it really shows who's actually been getting the reps in. Yeah. Who's actually been practicing. You know, and, and, and it's an interesting thing too, because I think it's one of these situations, and what I've realized even upon reflecting is most people spend their whole life on a treadmill versus a track. Mm, this Meaning that they spend their whole lives running in place and they confuse movement with direction, yeah. right? They get more obsessed on the announcement of things versus the action of things, yeah. right? Telling people what they're doing versus actually doing. And it isn't until, right, uh, un- until you get in those situations to where you have to actually run in a direction, when you actually have to show real movement towards something, Versus, again, running in place, right? Doing a lot of, you know, peacocking, beating mm-hmm. on your chest, right? When you have to get to and get to a point to where, where have you been from point A to point B, C, D, E, F, G? Mm. And I think that's one of those situations to where now when you actually can put guys on a 100 meter dash and see who crosses the finish line, then they realize like, well, I haven't actually been doing yeah. as much. Yeah. And that goes to everybody, right? Because, and, and it's all perspective because everybody's on a different track. Yeah. And you always have to be aware of what track you're on and the distance that you're traveling. And the more aware you can be about that as a guy, that's where the real improvement comes in. Mm. Right. And, and then it, and it happens, I think, for, for different guys, even on the money game. Right. Because one guy might be you know, happy about making 10 grand a month. But if you're in rooms where guys are making 100 grand a month, you realize that there's a lot more distance to go. Yeah. So there's a level of humbleness that comes with that because now, again, going back to that exposure, that awareness, right? It promotes more growth and it, you know, awareness keeps you humble. Yeah. Man, this is so good. I love that last point that you shared because I thought about this as well. And it's this idea of a lot of men in regards to putting in work and becoming who they want to be. They don't have tangible examples to compare themselves to. 
So comparison usually the thief of joy mm-hmm. and it's a negative thing. Yeah. But there is a level of healthy comparison yeah. that you need to have as a man mm-hmm. to kind of realize where you're at in regards to things. So I think what happens is that a lot of guys will think, oh, I'm at this level socially. But then you go into a room and you're only uh, only able to talk to a woman, let's say, who's uh, a, a, a silver medalist woman. But when the gold medalist women come in the room, you can't, you, you freeze. Mm-hmm. But then you see all the other guys in the room can talk to the gold medal women as well as the silver medal women. So then you realize, oh, snap. I thought I was working. I thought I was good. But then I realized I'm actually weak here. And I talk, and I remember um, also what happens is that so many guys don't, see their flaws until they're around other like-minded men who can share their flaws. So for example, there was a guy where I was telling you about who I know he's a high earning guy, makes a lot of money, but uh, one of my um, female friends who came to the, the, the experience, she told me, she was like, like when I met him, the first thing he told me was how much money he made. And that just reeked with insecurities. And so he might run that play in smaller towns where oh, I make it a month and, and the girls are impressed. But then you go to a big town, not realize that you flexing that mm-hmm. small town money is actually not only insecurity, but it's actually little money to them. Mm-hmm. But if he wasn't in a, an environment with other men who can see that kind of behavior and call him out on it, he would never change. And that's the thing that I realized when I was, ta- there was another guy who was in the stand and I was talking to him and I said, bro, who, who is your best friend? And he was like, I don't have one. I said, I know that. Yeah. Because of how you behave. Because mm-hmm. you have no one, you have no checks and balances. Yeah. You know, like, mm-hmm. like I think about when, whenever I get dressed around you, you're always able to see things I don't see. Mm-hmm. Oh, collar messed up. Yeah. Oh, lint here. Oh, pocket square, not on point. Oh, those shoes don't work. That if I was just by myself, I'd be oblivious to. Mm-hmm. And that's the part I realized what goes on today. Yeah. A lot of men are struggling and they're oblivious mm-hmm. to why they're struggling. Yeah. They're, they're totally oblivious to it. But until you put them in the environments where they actually can experience men who are not struggling and they can experience men to hold them accountable, then they will finally see with their eyes. But most guys today, unfortunately, yeah. all they do is watch this. Maybe read a book here and there, but they have no other guys. They don't have an Aquaman. Yeah. They don't have a Batman, a Superman, a Flash, mm-hmm. a Martian Manhunter. Yeah. They don't have like-minded, powerful men who are able to look at them and say, oh, that's off, bud. Oh, that's off right there. And you need to improve that. And that missing piece it's, it's, I'm telling you, if you see yeah. a guy who's struggling in life, you will always see a guy who lacks powerful masculine accountability because mm-hmm. he's mm-hmm. just oblivious to what he's doing wrong. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and the thing that's so powerful about that as well is nothing's worse, I think, as a man than being the guy that either A, is holding the group back, mm. right? Mm. Or B telling the group that you're going to do something and then when they ask about it being the guy that didn't do it facts there there's something power because as men you know you know there there is this very strict judgment structure to where if you aren't performing or you're not like if you're bringing the team down you gotta go yeah you can't play bro right like like you you cost us the game winning shot yeah you can't start anymore Whew. And, and I think it's that strict accountability that like it forces you either to grow or to go. Bro. You got to do one or the other mm-hmm. because the, the group itself will expel you out yeah. if you aren't able to, to rise to a certain occasion. It's so powerful. And I, I'll even give you this example. Shout out to Donald Knight, man. Don, he's a new CHRO, uh, just got, got this position, super proud of him. But he's been a guy who's been kind of a, a, a mentor you know, as well as client in my life. And, you know, one of the things that was so powerful uh, about when I met Don is I used to be a guy, like I hate getting up in the morning, right? It, it's it's one of my biggest struggles. And there's a lot of backstory to why, but but it just is. And I remember, you know, when I first met Don, you know, he, he was like, uh, yeah, he works out. And I'm like, oh, you work out? Okay, let's work out together. 
So it's like, okay, cool. I usually work out at LA Fitness, you know, around five. So I'm like, okay, cool. You know, we'll set it up, you know, Wednesday five, let's do it. So, you know, I, I get to the gym Wednesday five um, and, you know, I call him, you know, he's like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm about to pull up. And the first thing he says to me, he's like, yeah, man, this is actually my, my, my second time at the gym. I got the times confused earlier today. And I'm like, the times confused? What are you talking about? He's like, yeah, man, I actually usually work out at 5 a.m. But, you know, I, I, I forgot, man, 5 p.m. is cool. I'm like, 5 a.m.? I'm like, bro, there's no way. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, bro, you're yeah. out of your mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So work out with him the first time, you know. You know, then we work out again the next day. About third time, he called me. He's like, hey, man, honestly, I, you know, work's really busy this week. Can't do, uh, can't do 5 p.m., but uh, let's do 5 a.m. So now there's this really interesting situation because yeah. I have so much respect for Don that I don't, I don't want to show mental weakness yeah. and say, nah, I can't. So what do you think I say? I'm like, all right, Don, we'll, we'll do the 5 a.m. So, you know, man, I, I remember the first time I did. I'm waking up at 4 in the morning. Just said, bro, it's brutal. Yeah, It's brutal, right? But I, I get to the gym at 5 a.m., right? And two things are really interesting about that, too. When you get to the gym that early, what a lot of people don't realize is the gym actually starts becoming free because it's so early that the people at the yeah, front yeah, are yeah, yeah, like yeah. they're still opening the yeah, rest yeah, of the gym. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we get there, right? You know, one time becomes two, two times become three. And now what do you think I do? I only work out at five and six a.m. in the morning now. Yeah. Right. But the only reason that was able to happen is because I was around a guy who not only had so much respect for, but he had. There was so much accountability there that I didn't want to have to look him in the face in the morning or get a call from him like, Joe, where are you at? I thought we were working out at 5 a.m. today. Why aren't you here? Yeah. And that's what I think a lot of guys need. They need a Don. Yeah. You know, they need a group of guys to where the, the accountability, the respect level is so strong within that group that they don't want to have to wake up the next morning and be like, sorry, man, I can't do it. That's That's good, man. Nah, I love that. I love that a lot. No, I think that exactly is is some of the missing pieces, man. Yeah. And and to me, I think I got to a point where I said, bro, I've given you every piece of information. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm really information yeah. out. Yeah, like, yeah, I don't know yeah, what yeah, else yeah, to yeah, say. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm just committed at this stage of my life to just a man who just want to actually apply mm -hmm. the information to get in the game and and to me it's been a privilege to learn from you and all the other guys in the group and it's been a privilege to experience this because man in, in today's world there's so much negativity around men yeah there's just so much and there's so many people who complain about things that are wrong with men especially unfortunately black men yeah and to be able to bring in a whole squad of guys mm -hmm. who are all crushing it and then to say to people, where's your squad? So you say men aren't this. I got 400 <laughs> guys yeah. right here. Yeah. Where's yeah. your 400 ladies that are crushing it the way you said are crushing it? Mm -hmm. it's, it's now all about the receipts. Yeah. And it, and it, and it closes with going back to AMS. Yeah. A guy is so funny to me, man. He had a video I saw back in the day, and it was titled, Where Are Your Receipts? It was about, like, he's calling out dating coaches. Mm -hmm. He was like, all these dating coaches today, they're telling you, they get all these women, where are their receipts? I'm going to mm -hmm. show you my receipts. You know, I am. That's crazy. <laughs> and it's all, like, creep cam, like, video <laughs> of just him, like, girls coming back to his house. You know, yeah. be total unhealthy stuff. But the, what I love about what he was doing was he was saying, this is not theory. Mm-hmm. Here's actually the results. Yeah. And I think for me, so many people online are telling people stuff. I'm like, bro, are you actually trying that yeah. out? <laughs> yeah. Like people yeah. are worshiping these yeah. content critics. I'm like, are you actually yeah. trying that out? Yeah. yeah. Have you actually spent any time hanging out with him to see if he's actually doing the things he's saying? Yeah. Because some yeah. people are really putting on a facade. Yeah. And communicating one thing and being a completely different person. I said, I would never be that guy. Mm -hmm. that, so I said, I yeah. want you guys to come into my life and see for yourself the exact things I'm telling you is what I'm doing. The way the story 
of Joe working out mm -hmm. is a story for a lot of guys watching this video. But for Austin, that's real life because he went to work out with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. The stories that we're telling for a, the, the, a lot of men, this, these are things they experience too. Mm -hmm. Because for so far often, people always say, well, it's easy for you, Joe, you're handsome. Mm -hmm. Easy for you, Afish. You can put on muscle easily. It's easy for you. But when we're able to show every ethnicity, every height from short to tall, every finances from 80K to 800,000K, every type of guy, yeah. and say, well, he's winning, he's winning, he's winning, he's winning, he's winning. What the, is your excuse? Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is the goal. Yeah. And, and to me, it's just to, to give men a path. Mm -hmm. The men that want it the men who are hungry, to give them a path. Because when I was 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, you know, I never had, there was none of this available. There was not a community of extraordinary men commit to excellence, and there was not places where I can actually interact with the information that I'm getting. And so it's, it, I'm excited, man. And, and, and what hurts me the most is so many guys, are, all they're gonna do is watch it from the videos. When they could literally yeah. step into the TV. Imagine yeah. that. Yeah. Imagine watching yeah. Power Rangers as a kid. <laughs> and you have an option. Yeah. You yeah. can sit on the couch yeah. and watch them mm -hmm. battle in the Zords. Or you can hop in the TV yeah. and actually get to drive the Megazords. Mm -hmm. And get to battle the bad guys. Yeah. Why the hell would you watch when you can actually be in it? Mm -hmm. All our videos are not meant to be watched. Yeah. They're meant to be experienced. And I I know right now we're down to our last five or six suits. Yeah, man. We Yeah, we'll probably be sewed up, but yeah. yeah. So this is like the last opportunity. Mm -hmm. By the end of this week I know it's gonna be sold out yeah. for men to join. And and it's gonna hurt so badly for the men who are gonna miss out. And I know I'm long winded and I'll close with this story. I'll let you share the closing message. Everybody knows I love Gary Vee with all my heart. Mm -hmm. It's my guy. Last year, Gary Vee was dropping Vee Friends. And it was an NFT collection, and he was talking about NFTs. And I believe Gary. When Gary says something, I'm a Gary believer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I said, I'm about to get the NFT. So he talks about getting a MetaMask wallet, get my MetaMask wallet, talk about get your Ethereum, I'm going to get my Ethereum, I'm going to get everything ready for Gary Vee's drop. Things happened the day he officially drops it. I wasn't able to get it. I wasn't there. Mm. Uh, the following day, yeah. I just it just blew my mind. I just I just I knew I was supposed to do. It, I just didn't do it. Yeah, yeah. A couple months later, I was I was doing my podcast tour, getting ready to you know get some more guests on the podcast. I said, bro, I gotta get Gary B. Gary B. Back. It's been too long. Yeah. I DM Gary. Usually never responds. An hour later, Gary V. DMs me back. I DM him and say, hey, Gary, I, bro, I, will, I need to get you on the podcast back. You know, I have this many subscribers now. It would be an honor. Da, 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 da. He texts me back. Guess what he says to me, Joe? <laughs> you got the V friends? <laughs> Did you get the V friends? Oh, man. I said, oh, Gary V, I'm so sorry. I, did it. I was supposed to get it. Da, 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 da. Excuse, excuse, excuse. I go on the website to try to get a V friend last minute before I hit the send button. Mm -hmm. Mm. At, at the time I was going to buy it, it was $1,500, dollars mm -hmm. I went online to see it. It was sixty five dollars to $70,000. Mm. I said, Gary, I'm so sorry. I sent the message. Gary was like, it's okay. This year, she's dropping this conference, VCon. All the, everybody, yeah. anybody is going to be at that conference. Mm -hmm. Such a great opportunity to network, connect. I know it's going to be a miracle experience. In order to get in, have to have the NFT. Because I was lazy and not proactive, mm. I missed out on an opportunity. Yeah. And what hurts me the most is how many guys right now who are watching this video are going to miss yeah. out on an opportunity and are going to be like me one, two years later looking back, being like, dang, I wish I could have, should have done X, Y, and Z and tapped into the standard. And, and to me, I just hope that no one has that story. But unfortunately, I just know it's going to be the case. Yeah, man. I mean, and, and to your point, it, it just goes back to that idea of being, and we've talked about this before, serious versus curious, mm. right? 
curious people ask, serious people act. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be, I think, the biggest difference, you know, because when they start seeing the receipts, when they start seeing the next experience, mm. which is when they start seeing the with, next drop with, of, of oh, suits. Oh, my God. Yeah. The spring summer drops going to be insane. It looks like you're giving us yeah, a little yeah, sample, just, you know, a little, 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 little sneak, sneak, little sneak, sneak, sneak. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, when they start seeing the guys in the perception economics course. Bro, we you, need to show them you, pictures you, of the photo shoot. You, oh my god. Guys, check out these pictures from this photo shoot uh, from the men of the standard. I mean, uh, looking at that, right? I, I think when they really start seeing more of the content from the Masterclass Mondays, mm. from the story of a man, right? From the State of the Unions. I mean, there's just so many different things that are going on that it's going to get to the point to where it's going to be too late and there won't be access. We haven't even talked about that. Right. You know, there just won't be there just won't be access to even be able to to get in and take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, again, you know, some might, some will, some won't. Right. But, you know, the ones that do. Yeah. Those are going to be the ones that are really going to see the value um, and I think are going to see uh, some some major changes, uh, you know, because of the type of guys that are in the group and just how much value is being created, I think, in, in what we're doing. So, man, I, I'm, I'm excited, mm-hmm. you know, by by this time next year, I think it's going to be um, insane. It's going to be absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, with, 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 with what's going to be going on. So, brother, I'm just, I'm, I'm excited to do this with you, man. I love it. You I know? love it. love it. So, fellas, last last call for alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Defluentstandard.com. Yeah. Tap in. Joe, where can they find you at? Man, you can find me at Mr. J. Hines um, on Instagram and looking forward to connecting with you guys. I love you guys. Everything that we do, we do it so that you guys can win. My name is Hafiz, and I'm joined by Joseph Hines. We're the roommates, fellas. Be blessed and have a great day.